Podcast number 134 of the Texas Hemp Show. This is Russell Dowden, publisher, editor for the Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine. This is podcast 134 this week. Good morning to everyone listening on ESPN 1027 Austin. This is the Texas Hemp Show. I publish the Texas Hemp Reporter mag- Magazine, and our website is texashempreporter.com. This week, Texas football legend and former NFL running back uh, spent 11 years with the Saints, Dolphins, Ravens, uh, is joining us here, and the Texas Longhorn legend himself, Ricky Williams, joining us here on the Texas Hemp Show podcast. And the podcast is actually number 134, which uh, uh, Ricky was number 34. Ricky Williams, joining us this week on the show, launched a cannabis line called Heisman, uh, which is a nod to his Heisman season there in the 1998 season, the, the Texas Longhorns, and uh, growing this uh, uh, brand here in the industry here. He's also got a love for astrology, and we'll talk to him about how all of this and the celestial charts has lined up with his life experience here and, and learn a little more about the Heisman uh, brand here. Welcome to the program, Ricky Williams. How are you, my friend? I'm um, great. Thanks for having me. Wishing you a warm hookup horns right here in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, so it's good to have you here on the on ESPN Austin uh, here on the Texas Hemp Show. Wow, it's great to be here. Can you talk about? I guess first of all, just tell us a little bit how you got involved in this in your in your business professionally as well here in recent years. Yeah, I mean, in, in my mind, I think you know, business goes well when you get in when you go into business doing what you're passionate about and what you know about. And, and I have a lot of passion and experience with cannabis and I can have a fascinating story that, that the world needs to hear. And so I thought the best way to get it out was to, was to launch a brand. I understand the plan has helped you overcome some social anxiety that you had when you were younger. Uh, can you elaborate on that just as, as, the, as you know, it helped you make that transition, didn't it, Ricky? Um, not really. I, I didn't really start consuming cannabis regularly until I was already in the NFL for, for a few years. You know, and sometimes I'll talk about cannabis. It's kind of like coffee for, for introverts. You know, extroverts, they get their cup of coffee and they're ready to go tackle the world. And being an introvert, I found when I started consuming cannabis, it helped me deal with myself. Do you have anything to read? Yes. Um, I want to know kind of what are some benefits that cannabis has helped you with um, besides social anxiety? Well, I wouldn't, I mean, you know, because social anxiety was, was the story and the, and the label that was covered in the media, but I, I think it's more general. It just helped me understand and accept myself more. You know, I think we're, you know, we, we come into life and there's so many things coming at us from the outside that we, we tend to ignore what's going on on the inside. And I think we all suffer because of that. And I was, you know, I was guilty as a big time football player. And so most of my attention was going into other people's expectations of me. And in doing that, I completely neglected my own expectations of myself because I wasn't very aware of them. And I started consuming cannabis and I spent more time in a reflective state, really getting to know myself better. So the social anxiety was, was just a side effect of not knowing myself. I mean, it's kind of built into the, the name, social anxiety, that the people I was around, you know, weren't really my people, didn't really resonate with me. When I started consuming cannabis, I realized I realized that and I started to change my, my environment. I walked away from the NFL. I got to know myself a little bit better and my life improved drastically. Can you talk about the the, the uh, brand a little, uh, Ricky? We, I know there's different flavors. You've got your pregame, halftime, uh, postgame. You want to jump into the brand a little and just tell us about uh, – because uh, I, I like the story. It's kind of a lifestyle brand and, and with sports and culture, and I just thought I'd ask you if you might want to introduce the product line a little. Not really, if I'm being honest. You know, so much in the cannabis industry is everyone talking about their, you know, they got fire, they got fire. And so <laughs> check, you know, that that's at this point in the game, that's the easy part. 
I think the lifestyle side of the brand is much more interesting, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, people, people love their cannabis. And so I'm sure people that are sports fans, they kind of get it already. And yeah. I'll touch, I'll touch on the brand a little bit, kind of how, it, how it came about. Cause mm-hmm. I think it's a, it's a cool story. So it was during COVID and, and part of, you know, my, my income is I sign a lot of autographs, you know, I sign my name and I put, 1998 Heisman Trophy winner. And so COVID hit and a lot of the young athletes weren't traveling because the teams weren't allowing them to. A lot of the older retired athletes weren't traveling for their health. And so I, f- I fell in this middle, this middle spot where I was willing to travel. And so there was a whole lot of work for me. And I started signing cannabis inscriptions. So I'd sign my name and then I'd write smoke weed, smoke weed every day. Or I'd write puff, puff, <laughs> run or, you know, split joints, not carries. You know, um, and, and I, and my, my work quadrupled, you know, and I realized it got to a point where I realized these aren't all Ricky Williams fans. These are sports fans that love cannabis and there's nothing else out there that allows them to blend, blend these two loves together. And that's when I realized there's a, a real need for a lifestyle brand or an opportunity for people to bring, to bring these two things together. And I think what I, you know, what I'm, my personal story adds to it is a greater sense, a deeper sense of meaning. You know, my, my history with coming to terms with cannabis, it, it, it's a spiritual story. You know, I, I started, when I retired in 2004, I started, uh, I got really deep into yoga and it took me to India. And I was literally driving with my, with my Swami up to the, mm-hmm. to the Himalayas to meditate for, for a week. And as we're driving up the Himalayas, I, I looked out the window and I just saw like naturally growing tons and tons of cannabis plants. And it just and it occurred to me that, you know, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with this. This is a plant. And and it, and it touched me deeply and gave me a larger perspective on life. And and it connected to my purpose. You know, I think there's so many things that we don't engage in or we don't allow ourselves to think about because it's taboo or stigmatizing. We're not supposed to, but I think that's where all the gems are. And so the, the brand obviously is about people who appreciate cannabis, but I think deeper than that, it's about pushing people to go beyond, you know, our, our culturally accepted norms. Cause yeah. like I said, that's where the, that's where the good stuff is. Right. Which is why you kind of landed on spark greatness as the slogan for Heisman. So can you kind of talk about why you chose those words in particular to be associated with your brand? Yeah, because, you know, winning the Heisman Trophy and doing all the, the, the things I did on the football field from everyone in the outside's perspective, that was greatness. But it, for me, greatness was having the courage to walk away from the game and pursue what I was truly passionate about. And I, and so to me, greatness doesn't come from without, it comes from within. Nice. Yeah, that's really, that, that's one of the cool things that, about your story is that, you know, you've, you've, uh, you know, stuck to this. And what do you think about, you know, the, just the plant culturally right now? I mean, it's, you know, it, it, what do, can you speak to the culture of it being a little more acceptable than it was maybe 20 years ago? Yeah, I think the main push really comes from people appreciating the medicinal qualities of cannabis. Yeah. I say appreciating, but it's, I think it's more proper to say remembering. You know, I, I think we, we get lost in the past 80 years of, of the war on drugs. But prior to those 80 years, for thousands of years, cannabis has been seen in most places around around the, the earth as medicine. And, and it's just wonderful that it's starting to come back. And I think even before it was appreciated as physical medicine, it was considered spiritual medicine. And to me, I see that's that's where hopefully we're we're heading, and in sports, and I think in the world, right? We're making that shift from focusing so much on our, our physical bodies and physical health, and to focusing more on on mental health. Yeah, there was an article I saw today. I think it was the New York Times about uh, you know predominance predominance of, uh, of people consuming cannabis have mental health issues. You know? and I think before they would say that the cause of the mental health issues was cannabis, but I think now they're realizing that it's people self-medicating. And I think people self-medicating without the, prop- the proper education and information about what is actually going on is, is a big part of what, of what Heisman is about. Because until we deal with our stuff, until we deal with ourself, you know, we're not ever going to have access to our own greatness. 
Our guest, Ricky Williams, joining us here on ESPN Austin, the Texas Hemp Show this week. And we are going to be talking about his brand. We're talking about cannabis and the culture of cannabis and how this has really improved over uh, the last few uh, really decades. And, and the, the medical benefits of this has, has really improved and starting to create um, more awareness culturally. Uh, we're going to take our first commercial, commercial break here on the show. Ricky, we'll be right back on the other side. Our guest, Ricky Williams, and just talking about the cannabis culture here on 102.7 ESPN Austin. We'll be back on the other side. Texas Hip Show. Texas Hemp Show is brought to you by your friends at CBD Pros USA, your cannabis experts. Right now, you can save 50% off any one product if you mention the Texas Hemp Show. That's right, 50% off anything on the online store menu. Nano tincture, watermelon gummies, our Brio Drip moisturizing cream, any single item, 50% off. That's CBD Pros. CBD is present in more significant quantities in hemp than marijuana and because it's non-psychoactive cbd is widely regarded as the cannabinoid with the most health potential by researchers if you'd like to learn more about cbd and our products at cbd pros you can read our education page and browse some of our products to learn more visit cbdprosusa.com that's cbdprosusa.com Zar is a premium cannabis company in Texas. As Zar, we are uh, assured that uh, the quality is great for all of our products. Highest quality is super crucial. We always joke with our customers, hey, don't buy your sushi from a gas station, and no, you shouldn't buy your CBD from a gas station, right? It's all about quality, what the extraction process is. We're partnering with those types of companies, those individuals who maintain high quality hemp, as well as high extraction processes and this helps ultimately our clients confidence and that's what we want to provide SAR's mission is to help out our veteran community our our active duty members and to destigmatize cannabis and just help our communities uh, one consultation at a time isn't this chance worth it to improve your quality of life because that's what we do here at czar we truly put people first welcome to czar where people come first We took the best journalists from politics, health, innovations, cuisine, business, travel, agriculture, and then we put weed in it. Welcome to Weed and Whiskey News. Weed and Whiskey News. News with a twist. Texas lawmakers are in session this year to improve or alter laws on cannabis and hemp products. So stay tuned this legislative season with the Texas Hemp Show, Saturdays at 8 a.m. on ESPN 102.7. Or download the Texas Hemp Show wherever podcasts are available. The Texas Hemp Show is the official podcast for the Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine. The Texas Hemp Show is sponsored by CBD Pros, your cannabis experts. That's the Texas Hemp Show, Saturdays at 8 a.m. on ESPN Austin. Welcome back to the Texas Hem Show. This is our podcast 134 this week on the Texas Hem Show podcast. Russell Dowden here with my co-host Rachel Nelson. Morning to everybody listening on ESPN 102.7 Austin. Our guest this week, Ricky Williams, talking with us about the culture of cannabis. And we'll talk about his brand here on the other side of the break as well. But uh, our guest, Ricky Williams, this week, Welcome back home to Austin as we uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the medical benefits that this plant has really has for people. And we have CBD here in the Lone Star State, Ricky, and we have, uh, you know, 
the medical side of the plan. There's a bit of a recreational side here in the Lone Star State, but uh, people really starting to understand the benefits uh, medicinally uh, of this amazing plant. We all have family and stories that have had benefit. It helps my uh, mother sleep. It's been great for pain, for uh, creams. A lot of athletes I know pick up creams and, from stores here in Central Texas. So you were kind of alluding to some of the medical benefits. Can you speak to that and, and how that's affected our, our understanding of this plant in, in the last decade or two? Yeah, so I'm not a researcher or, or a scientist, but I can speak from my own personal experience. And, and I, you know, I know CBD is, is to me, C, CBD has been great because it's opened people's minds. But to me, the real, the real medicine, has, it comes from the altered state of consciousness. And, you know, in my, my studies of, of natural healing and alternative health, you know, we have a saying that the, the consciousness that creates a problem doesn't have the ability to solve a problem. And I think whether that's mental or physical, and I think there's nothing more healing than happiness and relaxation. And anyone who's had positive experiences with THC, with cannabis, can, can ascribe to those benefits. Yeah, I mean, there really is a lot of positive. Uh, I think, it, you know, I've used cannabis for probably 30 years of my life, and, and, it, and, and I, it, it has helped you in, in some ways for children. Socially, uh, it's there, but, but it also opens up your, your mind and it gets to that consciousness, that conscious aspect of the plant. Um, and, and kind of gets you, you know, thinking. And I always felt like I was more creative when I was smoking or, you know, uh, at night or, you know, whatever it was in my life I was doing, whether it was playing guitar or, you know, doing anything related to work or as a, as a graphic designer, you know, create, being creative. Uh, it was always something that, and I think that it, that's, that's something that I always found passionate about the plant is that the, the creativity that comes from it. Well, it's funny. People say that it, it adds creativity, and I, it seems like that, but my experience is that it diminishes our rigidity, which allows the natural creativity to flow. Because I don't think you can take anything and make you more creative, but you can take things that, in, that inhibit the parts of you that keep you rigid and keep you from being more creative. Not, not to think about any kind of substance. It doesn't really, doesn't really make us anything. You know, It gives us access to other parts of our mind and other parts of, our, of ourselves. You know, and so I'm, um, I'm a partner in, a, in a, a liquor store in Austin called 34 Wine and Spirits. And, and I, I, I had them put this big quote on the back of the wall. And the quote is about alcohol, but it could just as easily apply to cannabis. It's from an old time uh, psychologist named William James. And the quote is, the sway of alcohol over mankind is unquestionably due to its power to stimulate the mystical faculties of human nature, usually crushed to earth by the cold facts and dry criticisms of the sober hour. Sobriety diminishes, discriminates, and says no. Drunkenness expands, unites, and says yes. And, and to me, that, that's the message that I feel I'm here to, to, to get to the world. And, and, I, and I thank God for my experiences with cannabis because it's given me a platform to have these conversations. When I tried to talk about these things when I was only a football player, the, the general consensus was just shut up and run the ball. But getting suspended and people seeing that, you know, that I have other things that are more important to me has really opened up and created this platform to have these kinds of conversations. Yeah, I've been to your I've been to that liquor store, by the way. It's out there in South Austin. That's uh, Scott and AJ over there. I know those I've been over there yeah. those guys. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I used to I used to go in there and, and shop around this. I was aware of that store. I didn't didn't know that might come up, but but it is a cool store. It, it's it's it certainly helped me with my uh, just you know being aware of, of of myself and and I think you're right. That's interesting that you say that it it it, it, it already it allows you to access what's there already. It's not really changing you. It's it's just allowing for you to get you know, access to the, what's inside of you already. So I like that in that point. So you got anything, Rachel? Yeah, you know, I'm curious, uh, what was your first experience with cannabis? What kind of um, got you into the lifestyle? Because you said, you know, you were already in college for a few years playing football before you really got into it. And I think a lot of people would be surprised by that. So can you kind of just talk about um, what led you to this path? Um. I was like, I was having a really, really bad month, you know? 
And it's like, a, you know, I was fortunate, you know, I'm kind of a optimistic guy. So going through most of my life, I, you know, I, I learned early to deal with adversity, but I got into college and just the pressure and the adversity really started to shut me down. And a good friend of mine suggested that I take a couple of hits from his bomb. Uh, and, you know, I was reticent because I'd smoked a, a couple of times with the guys, but it was more in a social, a social setting. And I didn't think that it could actually help me beyond helping me be more social around the, the upperclassmen. But when I smoked that time, I kind of all of the stress and the stuff that was eating me up, it started to, to subside. And in its place, the, crea the creativity started to come in. And instead of focusing on all the things that were going wrong in my life, I started to think about all the things that in, in the future could go right. And it was, in the, it was in the beginning of my senior season. And uh, after that night, I, the next two games, I had back-to-back 300-yard -back games. And I was sold after that. You know, it was, it's kind of hard to deny that it was, it was helpful. And anyone who's been stuck in that dark place and couldn't, and could, couldn't get out no matter what they did, I think, can, can appreciate how, how scary being in that spot can be. And to find something that could help lift the depression and open my mind to something better, it was... It became a valuable, invaluable tool for me after that. Nice. I bet it was disappointing whenever you realized that, you know, it was unacceptable in um, your football career. Could you kind of talk about that experience? Not really. Not really. Because, you know, I grew up in the 80s. And so it was no, like, I always knew it was unacceptable. And for me, it was more, it was more exciting to, to realize that a lot of the things that our parents and the adults told us was unacceptable had ways of actually being good for us. So aside right. from just the cannabis experience, it really opened my mind to the other ways that I've been lied to. You know, because, you know, the, the mind is an amazing thing, but if there's certain places we don't allow our mind to go, we don't get the full benefit of it. Absolutely. That's something Cheech said when he was on the show. I listened to that episode and he said, what else are they lying about <laughs> the first <laughs> yeah. time he tried it? So that's funny that you have the same exact thing to kind of share. Yeah, I wonder if, uh, you know, I, I hope that the, the, I hope Texas would actually make this this come around, you know, for for us to be able to try a full THC products in the Lone Star State. But we, we often talk about on this show, Ricky, where it might be something that the government does in Washington and that that might be, you know, the, the, it may be you know federally legal before Texas ever comes around to it, but it's certainly imp uh, empowering to know that the culture is starting to to open up to this, and and it's definitely more acceptable. Can you comment, Ricky, on maybe just isn't doesn't it seem like the culture is getting more open to this in sports and in general? I mean, I, I'd like to think so. You know, you know, back in two thousand four, yeah. when I when I got in a lot of trouble for cannabis. You know, I, I had these conversations with myself, you know, I said, is this, did I just ruin my life? You know, that was the big question I was, I was sitting with. And what I came up with was actually the opposite. You know, I saw that I had an opportunity to show the world that there's nothing wrong with this plant. And so I, I said, you know, if I can show by example that it makes me a better person, not a worse person, then it has to have an effect on people. And I know from the people I've talked to in the NFL that a, lot, a big reason why they've changed their, their, their punitive approach to cannabis was because of the way that that I was mistreated. Yeah, and and I think that you you've it's a, it's improved and empowered everyone uh, since you know since the impact that you've had on uh, not just sports but culture uh, in this space. Stay right there, Ricky Williams, our guest here on ESPN 1027 as we talk cannabis and we'll talk culture uh, with our guest Ricky Williams here on the Texas Hemp Show. This is podcast number 134. We'll be back on the other side. This is ESPN Austin 1027. We'll be right back. Zip Custom Cannabis Packaging, your brand, your way. Flexible packaging pouches are perfect for a variety of cannabis CBD products, such as flour, concentrates, edibles, joints, hard goods, and more. Now offering completely custom bags, boxes, labels, and shrink sleeves with more products rolling out in late 2023. Canazip bags have been stress tested by Bella Costa Labs for excellent THC, 
terpenes, and potency preservation. A variety of eco-friendly options for sustainable packaging solutions. We offer custom printed packaging turnaround time in as little as 24 hours with approved art on selected products. Custom pouches to make your brand stand out. These bags are made from high barrier materials that comply with FDA regulations for direct food contact, featuring no minimum order quantities on most items. Try our stand-up pouch or lay flat pouch for fast and easy online ordering. Visit canazipbags.com today. That's canazipbags.com. Or email us at orders at canazipbags.com. That's Canazip Custom Cannabis Packaging. Hemp-derived cannabinoids such as Delta-8 and others are once again under threat in the Texas legislature. But Hometown Hero, a supporter of the Texas Hemp Show, is leading the fight to keep these products legal and available for adults 21 and older in the Lone Star State. Based in Austin, Hometown Hero is known for its specialty hemp-derived products, which have garnered recognition from High Times Magazine and have earned over 3,000 five-star reviews and counting. With their gummies, cereal bars, sour belts, and more, Hometown Hero offers new and novel experiences while donating to nonprofits helping U.S. veterans in need. If you're curious to try premium hemp products from the people leading the fight for hemp in Texas, you can get a 20% discount on all Hometown Hero products by using code THR20 at HometownHeroCBD.com. That's code THR20 at HometownHeroCBD.com. Hey, this is Tommy Chong, and you're listening to the Texas Hemp Show. The Texas Hemp Report is available free at over 1,000 CBD and smoke shops across Texas. McAllen, Houston, Austin, Dallas, Lubbock, and San Antonio. Texas lawmakers will be in session this year to improve or alter laws on cannabis products. So stay tuned and informed this legislative season with the Texas Hemp Show podcast and the Texas Hemp Reporter magazine. Would you like to host the Texas Hemp Show podcast at your business or special? Event now booking live broadcast from your location with our new demo vehicle, the Texas Green Machine. Email Russell at Texas Hemp Reporter at gmail.com. Now back to the show with your host, Russell Dowden. back to the Texas Hemp Show. I'm Russell Dowden, publisher and editor for the Texas Hemp Reporter Magazine. This is podcast number 134 this week. And it just happened to run 134 as our podcast this week, at Rachel. And then uh, great to have Ricky Williams as our guest there, uh, toting the number 34 for uh, uh, the Texas Longhorns many years here in, uh, in Austin, Texas. We're talking our conversation uh, will continue here as we uh, talk about cannabis and the culture of cannabis and and uh, you know Ricky Williams really been a trailblazer for this plant and and really the social uh, it's gotten more acceptable I think over the gener- over the last 20 years you know and and uh, uh, Ricky's been one of those uh, sports figures that have continued to push the conversation forward with cannabis and wanted to ask you what do you think about other sports figures in sports today Ricky that that uh, also push the envelope and, and move the, the conversation forward with cannabis? Well, I guess I wish there were more. You know, a lot of the guys that I've talked to are, a lot of guys I've talked to are afraid. You know, it's, it's the stigma still is powerful. I think people are afraid of it tarnishing their reputation. But to me, a, a reputation of being something that you're not or pretending not to be something that you are, not really worth it. I think that's one of the things people like about your story too, though, Ricky, is that you kind of stuck to your guns and, you know, it, it's, it just shows to your, your character that uh, you've stood behind this plan and, 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 and stuck to your, to your belief in it. And, 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 you know, uh, what do you think when, you know, like the 2020 Olympics, when it was, uh, uh, was Shikari Richardson was kind of criticized for coming up with a testing positive, um, we see this happen and then, you know, it, it, that does make it hard for athletes to come forward, doesn't it? When when they get, you know, punished or, you know, fined or what have you. Yeah, but to me, you know, being an athlete is is, is temporal. 
you know, when people forget about you, and unless you're the best that you're ever, people forget about you in a generation. But I know kids, you know, my, my kids, my teenage kids tell me that I'm the coolest parent in the school because of cannabis. And so I think what I've been able to do is transcended sports. And when I tell young athletes, I say, you know, being a professional athlete in, in the long scheme of your life, it just gives you a platform to do something. But how are you going to utilize that platform? And I feel very fortunate that I've been able to utilize my platform to touch and help and inspire a lot of people who don't have any interest in football. Yeah, and I, I think that's what's unique about your story is you've you've always pushed the envelope of the conversation forward, and and I think people, you know, have have shown show a lot of respect for you because of that, and and you know it's kind of one of the reasons we just wanted to have you on the show and reach out to you, talk to you about. We could talk about your brand if you want as well, but this is also just great, you know, talking about how you've moved this conversation forward. Well, here's my here's my issue with like here's my issue with with the brand stuff, you know, is that. <laughs> to me, a, a brand needs to be authentic. And if someone has to talk about their brand and it's different from being themselves, then I think there's a there's something missing. And I and I so like my brand, I feel speaks speaks for itself. Here's an example. Okay, so part of what I do to support the brand is I go to the different markets and I and I go to dispensaries and I and I sign autographs and I talk to people. And usually before I come, a lot of the bud tenders who are too young they've ever seen me play, right? But they, they know YouTube, and so they hear that I'm coming, and they go on YouTube, and they do a little bit of research on me, and they're blown away by my story. And, and so the brand and the way they connect to it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that I play football, but it has to do that I, I've been an advocate, and I, and I have stood by my guns. And I think that inspires them to keep doing what they're doing, because right now, cannabis is so young, most of the people that are really into it have had to deal with their parents and their teachers and their coaches and people telling them that it's bad for them. And I realized I've had the opportunity to be a role model for a lot of these people. For a lot of these people. Yeah, yeah, you really have. And, and it, it is it, it is young. This, this space is pretty young in the in the totality of things. I mean, we really haven't had this uh, legal in many, many states. I guess, I don't know, how many states are now legal recreational, Rachel? It's, I, I think, 30. Know. There's probably 30 states at least now that are not wrecked, but I think there's at least 30 that have medicinal programs. Yeah. I think it's 35 or something. Yeah. But I believe there's over 22 that are recreational as well, which speaks to, to the, the more uh, that's being you know more, more acceptable for this. Uh, so, you know, that, that, that's really good. We, hey, we were talking about you the other day. Do, do you have a wellness brand too? I do. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the first. Hey, can you talk about that a little? We were we we kind of stumbled on that the other day. Yeah, it was it was my first foray into the cannabis space. And my wife and I back in 2018 launched a company called Real Wellness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, are those products available in Texas at all, Ricky? We were kind of. Wondering. Yeah, yeah, we're we're on. Yeah, we're online. And so my you know my wife was just up here. My wife was just up here filling orders. And it's cool, you know, it's something that her and I have, have done together. And it's it was really, when I first stepped into this space, my, my training after I retired was as an herbalist. I studied um, Ayurveda, which is the herbalism that comes from India. And I studied Chinese medicine, Chinese herbalism. And in both systems of medicine, cannabis has been used for thousands of years. And so I, I saw it as an opportunity to show people from an herbalist perspective that cannabis blends well with other medicinal herbs. And, and it actually becomes more potent because it, it, I, I talk as like a team, you know, one person that does something great is wonderful, but when you add teammates that can support what you're doing, the effects are even more powerful. So we, we've taken what people call the entourage effect, we've taken it to the, to the next level. Yeah, yeah, we come and kind of came through on the 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 real wellness uh, herbal a, a few uh, like last week, and and we were like, man, I wonder we. I haven't seen the brand around as much as, as I'd like to, so I, I think we just need to look at it as a as an option to purchase some on online. Then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Rachel, you got anything for? Yeah, Ricky? I'm curious. You know, when was the last time that you came to Texas, and what are some of the things you remember about living in Austin back in your Heisman days? Um. Well, I'm in Texas a bunch. I have I have two teenage kids that live there, so I think I was there about a month ago. Um, 
watching my son play play baseball. Uh, what do I remember from my days? Uh, I remember my teammates, you know, because, you know, in the college football program, it's like a bubble. And you spend so much time with the same guys and it becomes like a second family. And that's really what, what drew me to, to Austin coming from California was the, the, the guys on the team. And so just the ups and the downs and the, the triumphs, it's just – you hear a lot of athletes say that, and they usually say it about their professional careers. But, but still, you know, my, my fondest memories in life are those those four years I spent in Austin. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're 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 certainly loved and adored here on the forty acres and around the state of Texas. What led to from that from studying, you know, the the, the alternative to, to getting you into the astrology is that there's probably with that Chinese medicine or Eastern philosophy, some of that must have carried over into your interest in the astrology, right? Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's what led me to astrology. So I went to came to Northern California to study Ayurveda, which is it's like the yogic medicine. It's the and so that led me right into yoga, and then yoga is very much connected to astrology. And so I went to my first yoga retreat and I met this woman who was doing a lot of astrology. And this was, you know, when I retired from the NFL. So I, I kind of was trying to figure out where I was going to go in my life. And we had the most amazing conversation and I just felt seen. It just blew my mind that she could get my birth information and look at this circle or, or this square and, and be able to talk to me in a way where she really saw something deeper inside of me. And it changed my life and it had such a powerful impact on me that I, I begged her to teach me what she knew. And I was about 18 years ago, and I've been passionately studying in the past five years, passionately practicing as an astrologer. And um, so I, I have two companies right now. I launched Heisman about two years ago, and about a year and a half ago, I launched an astrology app called Lila, L-I-L-A. And I, I feel like those two, those two tools, you know, have really equipped me to, to live my best life. Wow. What are some of the features of the Lila app? Yeah, so it, it gives the, this idea. I wanted to give people that same experience of feeling seen. So I was on a call the other day and I was talking to someone about Leela. And on the call, she downloaded and started to look at what Leela told her about herself. And the thing that came out of her mouth that just lit me up is she said, I felt so seen. I feel so seen. And so, uh, like a mirror. I think astrology is like a mirror, but the kind of mirror that reflects what's deeper inside of you. And then the other thing about astrology is it, timing. You know, and so we, we built this amazing timing piece to, to help people understand what's going on inside and how to make make the best use of of the moment. Uh, I guess you're you're licensed astrologer, I understand. And uh, your study of the celestial charts has kind of helped you with this topic. Uh, um, I'm a Scorpio and I'm always read into my and read into my charts some from, I guess, rather a novice aspect of this but i will say that as a scorpio I, I a lot of those things you hear about yourself are are there uh, and and whether it was in relationships or what have you uh, uh i've always been very fascinated by by the charts yeah you know sun signs which is what you're talking about when someone says i'm a scorpio or i'm a gemini you're talking about where the, what sign the sun was in at the time of birth but when you get deeper into astrology, there's nine other objects, you know, nine other celestial objects that give us sometimes more information than the sun sign gives us. But so specifically talking about sun signs, and we get the we get the symbolism straight from the sun. Our sun sign tells us what gives us energy. And a Scorpio gets energized by dealing with taboo subjects. You know, Scorpio is trying to uncover the truth. You know, I say Scorpio is attracted to those things that are that our parents lie to us about. So it makes sense that you're that you're up in front about in this taboo subject and helping people get access to the truth. You know, what's being hidden, what's being obscured from them. Yeah, that's, it's funny because I, I used to publish Weird Magazine and I, and I have another podcast called Paranoid America. <laughs> so there is another, there is a, a lot of that side of me gets explored yeah. through, through other, other things that I've done in, in, in my career. But, you know, I just think this part of, of that, that's, this is so, so interesting that you know that you've gotten into this. I I'm kind of a fan of reincarnation and e and uh, Eastern philosophies as well. I think people have are destined to certain uh, life experiences, Ricky, and I think yeah. you probably could could even uh, t uh, testify to some of that. 
but uh, let's talk a little bit more about star uh, astrology and and our guest uh, here Ricky Williams as uh, we continue this uh, conversation here on the other side this is the Texas hip show we're gonna take a quick final break we'll come back and and maybe we'll get Ricky to read our charts or something I don't know we'll talk to Ricky Williams after this ESPN 1027 this is the Texas hip show we'll be right back I refuse. I take you all back, back through the roots. I was a young pup. Howdy, 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 folks. Welcome to Weed and Whiskey News. I'm your host, Jay Man. I got a bunch of stocks, pot stocks, regular stocks. They've been all suffering. But in fact, it was the le- making marijuana illegal that created the crime. <laughs> you smoke the little uh, uh, When I am in a legal state. Uh, <laughs> Pothead, he's also a co-star in there. You'll see him all the time, every time. And not everybody has orange Cheeto dust on their fingers because they, they, they use uh, cannabis, right? I am not from this world, but this guitar is. You will be able to win this guitar for Christmas. As always, I'm your host, Jay Man. See you again real soon. Hey, this is Cheech Marine, and you're listening to the Texas Hemp Show. The Texas Hemp Show is brought to you by your friends at CBD Pros USA, your cannabis experts. Right now, you can save 50% off any one product if you mention the Texas Hemp Show. That's right, 50% off anything on the online store menu. Nano tincture, watermelon gummies, our Brio Drip moisturizing cream, any single item, 50% off. That's CBD Pros. CBD is present in more significant quantities in hemp than marijuana. And because it's non-psychoactive, CBD is widely regarded as the cannabinoid with the most health potential by researchers. If you'd like to learn more about CBD and our products at CBD Pros, you can read our education page and browse some of our products to learn more. Visit CBDProsUSA.com. That's CBDProsUSA.com. Now, back to the show with your host, Russell Doubt. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. All right, welcome back to the Texas Hit Show podcast. Uh, this is episode number 134 this week. Good morning to everybody listening here on Austin's uh, ESPN 102.7. I'm Russell Dowd, and we publish the Texas Hemp Reporter magazine. Our magazines are available in, across the state. We're in CBD stores, smoke shops all over Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, even sprinkle down a little bit of the magazines down into the Rio Grande Valley, but we are available online. You can read us at TexasHempReporter.com is our, our our website. Check us out on social media and, and Facebook if you'd like to follow us out there. Our guest this week, Ricky Williams, talking with us about the amazing plant and all the benefits that cannabis has, has done. And, and it's also helped him, helped him in his life. So we'll uh, continue this conversation with Ricky. And uh, let's ask him uh, maybe a little bit about... I don't know. I might be interested in maybe getting my 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 star chart ready. He's pretty nail much nailed me on that Scorpio thing already. I I just got to say I'm real understanding the self identity and and how it affects people professionally in their careers. So doesn't some people's careers find a, a certain path to Ricky, whether it's the moon or I think some people's career paths end up kind of following with their star what the stars say about them. It's just interesting as heck to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get like too technical, but but career, we we 
we look to what's called the 10th house. You know, and astrology, is, it really is a science. You know, there's laws and rules and things that you have to follow that really set up your, your common sense or your intuition to make, to make meaningful connections for people. And, it, and the way I practice it, it's, it's more like a spiritual practice. You know, it's like when I was growing up, my mom would always say, God, don't make junk. You know, and, and to me, what that meant is that we're all built for something. And I think the greatest waste of, of resources, the greatest waste of talent is people trying to do something that they weren't built for. And I think the greatest joy we have in life is if when we find what we were built for. And you know, my, my running back coach at Texas said, you know, when God thought of making a running back, he thought of me. So definitely physically, I was built to be a running back. But I think mentally, emotionally, I was built to be an astrologer. And so... I feel so fortunate that I get to spend my days talking to people about themselves and their, their journey and their path in life and helping people to find more meaning. Is that Coach Buck Coach Bucky? Bucky, yep. <laughs> oh, Bucky. I, I had a I had a show on another, uh, another uh, sports station here in town, so I, I know Buck I know uh, Bucky from that station over there. And you know what? He he's we've ran into him over at one of our CBD clients. Uh, he's no he's actually taking some CBD products. I know. Uh, as well, uh, uh, ironically enough, I know I, I know I'm, I'm ran into him at some stores. What else would you like to talk about? What's going on with you this year? What have you got going on? You know what I like to talk about? There's 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 two things. Two things I like to talk about. I feel like we need to touch on. And the, the first one is, you know, I appreciate the music. You know, I grew up I grew up a huge huge Bob Marley fan, and, and I, I'd say that Bob Marley was my first spiritual teacher because not only was his music like wonderful. But there's always a message, and the message really inspired me as a kid. You know, it, it was the only time I ever wrote a letter to a famous person. Even though he was passed, I wrote this long letter when I was 13 to Tough Gong Records just to, just to express how much I was inspired and touched by, by Bob's music. So I, I don't think it's a coincidence or an accident that I'm kind of, in, at least in my mind, I'm following in his path and, and trying to use my art and my gifts to, to put a message out into the world. And this is related to the second thing that I want to talk about. And I think it's kind of hidden in our, in our tagline for Heisman Spark Greatness is to me, cannabis is, is wonderful and it's great. But I think the more important conversation is what is what do you do after you consume? You know, and so I like to talk to people. <laughs> I like to have the conversations. Most people say, you know, I just sit around and watch movies. But but there's other people that, you know, we'll talk about. Like what, So after I retired from the NFL, I, I moved back to Austin because I still had like 60 or I still had like 72 hours of school that I had to finish to get my degree. And I promised my mom I'd get my degree. So I remember sitting in my, in my apartment in Austin trying to read these textbooks and it's like, oh, you know, I don't feel like doing this. And then I would say, oh, I go outside of the patio and I smoke a little bit and I come back in and I would consume the reading. Even though I didn't have to write, I would start writing, you know, about what I read and connect and making connections to myself. And, when, and people ask, what is my favorite thing to do when I consume? Favorite thing I love to do is I love to read, usually astrology books. Uh, and I love to code. A couple of years ago, I, I, I learned how to code a little bit and kind of creating this app really got me into that. And hours, you know, I'll be up hours being creative and, and inventing things. And so to me, it's, it's what you put in. It's what you put in your body. But it's also what do you produce from that from that consumption? And I think if more people are thinking about what they can produce from their cannabis consumption, I think that's how we spark great. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I I always wanted to play guitar or, or do something, you know, artistic. It seemed like uh, was was what I wanted to do whenever I smoked. It, that just made me want to do that or, or maybe play video games. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I mean, we laugh at video Ricky. games. But I'm a Gemini. Oh, okay. Gemini. Yeah. Yeah. But in my chart, my sun is, is my weakest planet. And so, and so I'm definitely a Gemini. I'm definitely excited by talking and talk, sharing my ideas and reading and thinking. But, but I'm a healer. You know, I have a cancer moon and my greatest passion is healing. So when I was a football player, this is kind of the Gemini. I do so many different things. But when I was in my last few years in, in Miami, um, I went to massage therapy school because I wanted to be able to take more and more courses and, and learning how to not only heal myself, but how to touch other people and bring, bring life, bring energy, bring healing to them too. And so 
you know, it's it's proper use of my sensitivity. You know, my sensitivity got me in trouble being a football player, but as a as an astrologer and as a healer, it's something that's cherished, and it not only helps me, but it helps the people that I'm in contact with. Nice. And what did you get your degree in um, whenever you came back to Austin and, and finished up your school? Yeah, I was always fascinated. This is Gemini, very Gemini. I was always fascinated with learning. And so I wanted to learn and understand the psychology of learning. So I got my degree in educational psychology. Nice. <laughs> well, that's awesome. You know, we got a few minutes left with you here, maybe five, five minutes or so left. What, tell folks that might have a misconception still, Ricky, about cannabis. What, what would you say to folks that are still hardliners against the plant? Even though there's probably not very many of them in Austin left, but there, right. there's still a few out there. Yeah, uh, two things, right? The first thing I would say is don't knock it till you try it, you know, because there's some people that are knocking it with, and they haven't had an experience. But there's also a lot of people who have had experiences and they haven't had pleasant experiences. So I, I tell them, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna go the edible route, you know, like start slow. I mean, like five milligrams, you know, take a gummy and just bite the head off, you know, and just put it away and just <laughs> ride with that. And if they're and if they're consuming combustibles, you know, I just say take one hit, just take one hit and put it down. And I, I learned this because the last, you know, the last two thirds of my career in the NFL, I was being drug tested, you know, one to two times a week. And, and I wasn't, you know, I, I'm, a re, I'm a rebel. So I wasn't going to stop consuming, but I got it down so I knew I could take three hits, you know, and I could pass the drug test the next day. And, and it just, and it, especially if, you, if you're just starting, you start slow and have an experience. And, and I'd also say, you know, piggybacking on what I said earlier is have something planned that you'd really like to do. And even if it is playing a video game, if it's your favorite video game or watching your favorite movie or doing something so that you can really appreciate the experience. It's really yeah. about being intentional when you consume. And I think that that's really the key because that that puts all the BS that we've been taught, all the BS about the, the stereotypes that have been put in our head when we can be intentional and, and own and claim our own experience and build our own relationship with the plant. Yeah, whether it's listening to music or you know, play, like I said, mm. playing a video game when I—that was probably you know when I was younger. But I, I, I definitely you know still pick up the guitar and I want to do something creative or find the uh, find the creative outlet there if 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 that lends that for for experiencing you know cannabis. So, what's going on with your calendar, Ricky? What have you got booked up for this year? Are you enjoying your summer? Do you doing any uh, tour sports signings, anything you want to talk about that's coming up that, that you'd like to plug? No, I'm just really hustling. You know, I'm <laughs> starting two businesses and, be, you know, I'm sure you know, right? Being an entrepreneur, you got you to gotta be on your grind. You know, my yeah. wife and I, she, she's also an astrologer. And so, you know, we have, we live on five acres and there's a yurt right across there. And so we've opened up our, our land and our home for people to come and do retreats where we really dive into their astrological chart and, and give them an experience to live it. Cause you know, my wife and I'll, you know, people come over to visit and they're like, I don't understand what you guys are talking about because we're constantly speaking in, in astro <laughs> astro language. So how do we get to go to this uh, retreat? Is that something you can fire off a website for or something? Yeah. So people, well, it's really only open to people that have that booked time with me and have had an introduction to the way I, I I look at astrology, but if anyone wants to book some time and understand about their chart or my perspective on astrology, uh, my website is rickywilliams.life, L-I-F-E. And yeah, people can check out what I'm doing and, and book some time with me. Well, just fascinating talking with you and, and learning a, a, a little glimpse inside your world. You've just been a great influencer of the, and uh, you know a, a spokesman and a gentleman for, for this plan. And you know, we wanted to have you on here and talk to you about it. So we appreciate you giving us, a, 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 you know, an hour of your, your your afternoon to talk about this wonderful plant. Can I ask a favor of you? Please. Well, just one of the things, since you're on the show, I thought I would ask maybe if you could get a, do me a little drop. What do we, sometimes we do that. We ask, a, we ask you to say, you know, hey, it's Ricky Williams. You're listening to the Texas Hemp Show or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I can do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, let's hear it, man. Okay, this is Ricky Williams, and you're listening to the Texas Hemp Show. Hook 'em. Hook 'em horns. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, great stuff. Ricky Williams, our guest. 
fired the website off again. I can't believe you just said it's rickywilliams.life, I believe, is what you said. That's me. Right? You got it. Ricky Williams, our guest this week. We talked a little sports. We talked a little cannabis. But we mostly talked about life and the spiritual aspect of, of uh, the benefits of this plant. Great conversation, Ricky. We appreciate you, my friend. And uh, we look forward to maybe having you come back sometime down the road. Enjoy your summer with your family, man. We appreciate your time. Thank you for what you do. And thank you for the music. This was great. Awesome. Thank you. All right. We'll wrap things up. That's podcast number 134 this week. Our guest, Ricky Williams. Great talking with him, Rachel. Good stuff to learn more about him and his perspective. I always enjoyed that as been a fan of him, not only toting the rock, but toting the rock of life as well as he's been a great ambassador for this plant. Guys, tune in next week. We'll do, who do we have on next week on the show? We've got... Uh, it's going to be Canna Zip and Hometown Hero coming up, along with Smol- uh, Smiling Wellness. So uh, thank you for our guest, Ricky Williams, for calling in this week. We'll see you next time. It's this podcast 134 as we wrap listening here to the Texas Hip Show, ESPN 1027 Austin. We'll see you next week. Sell your soul for a piece of gold.